The world's largest economy with a GNI per capita of 30,000 US dollars, Korea is becoming one of the largest, most influential economies of the world beyond Asia. Here in Seoul, the capital city of Korea is the Chamber that delves deeper into what's happening around Korea from an economic perspective. I'm your host, Panita Bajaj. This week we talk about the future of the Korea-Luxembourg cooperation with Luxembourg's Deputy Prime Minister, Etienne Schneider. So for those of you curious about Korea and what goes on around the world, we are here in Seoul, the economic hub of Northeast Asia. So without further ado, let's step into the chamber. Developed this satellite company, uh, which is called SES, uh, and in the existing big data system, you they often turn to open through um, radar technology. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, today we learn about one of Europe's smallest nations with a high standard of living. A very honorable guest joining us today. We have Luxembourg's Deputy Prime Minister and Prime Minister of the Economy, Etienne Schneider. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, a, a wonderful privilege it is to have you on the show, on the Chamber, as we talk about the relationship between Korea and Luxembourg when it comes to an economic point of view. So, of course, this isn't your first time to Korea. You've been here on a number of occasions, mainly to encourage more economic cooperation between the two nations. So would you please like to share with us what brought you here this time? Well, uh, as you, as you uh, said, actually it's not my first time. And normally when I come, I'm uh, uh, together with His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince of Luxembourg, but uh, he couldn't do it this time. And he apologized for that because he loves this country as I, as I do. Uh, actually, you know, the relationship between our two countries is uh, dating back a very long time. And uh, I, I would also, you know, having been Minister of Defense of my country as well, I want to, re to remind you that uh, Luxembourg has fought in the Korean War yes. as well in the 1950s. So that shows that even at that time already, mm -hmm. Luxembourgish people were interested in your country and they engaged themselves in, 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 in serving and helping your country. But, uh, you know, since the, let's say, the last 20, 30, the years, um, the economic ties between our two countries grew uh, steadily. And uh, there are many uh, Korean companies, uh, manufacturing companies as well, uh, who are active in Luxembourg since, uh, since many years. Um, uh, but uh, in the recent years, you know, the development of um, more like a, a high tech relationship and relationship between startups uh, uh, is becoming more and more uh, important and uh, you know the reason of my visit here this week is actually to promote cooperation between our startups uh, to promote the cooperation in the space business uh, between our two countries and of course the you know the general uh, economic cooperation which we have sure I mean Luxembourg is fair to say is a, is a booming startup hub seems like more and more people are interested to start a business there with many more um, uh, regulations and laws enabling in, uh, entrepreneurs to start up businesses quite easily um, but we'll talk about that a little bit later we want to ask how has your economic cooperation thrived since diplomatic relations were established you know we say uh, it's been a long time since uh, the two countries have been friendly since 1962. Can you tell us about the current status of Korea and Luxembourg uh, when it comes to the economic exchange and cooperation? I think, you know, first of all, the um, 
the friendship between our two countries has always been great and there have, have never been problems mm -hmm. of any kind between our two countries. But uh, to come back to your question, um, I think the first kind of cooperation was uh, investments, industrial investments from South Korea uh, to Luxembourg. Uh, and uh, on this we built up you know, a, a kind of more diverse uh, industry going into fintech uh, companies uh, um, being active in Luxembourg. Nowadays we are also uh, discussing, negotiating with space, uh, new space companies mm -hmm. uh, wanting to develop their activities in Luxembourg. But uh, in general I could say that Luxembourg is a very interesting um, country in the European Union for Koreans uh, and for, for Korean um, companies because they can use Luxembourg as their European hub. If you know that Luxembourg's geographical location in the European Union is, uh, is pretty unique mm -hmm. because you can reach 60% of European GDP in less than one hour flight. Mm -hmm. That shows that Luxembourg is really an interesting strategic point to have your economic activities or to bring your goods to Luxembourg and distribute them from Luxembourg all over uh, the European Union. That's maybe one of the reasons why the, uh, one of the biggest all airlines, uh, Cargolux, uh, which is a Luxembourg company where the Luxembourg government is uh, one of the, the important shareholders as well, is uh, bringing Korean goods three times a week to the European market towards Luxembourg. So, uh, you know, that's a little bit um, the reason um, why the cooperation, the economic cooperation between our two countries is re really working well. Because we have this strategic uh, advantage of being in the heart of Europe, but also of being a very, very multicultural country. Absolutely. Well, last year, Prime Minister um, Javier Battelle has also visited and you know talked about uh, intensifying exchanges when it comes to academics or um, you know uh, bilateral cooperation in fintech, ICT, aerospace technology, which you mentioned, and many other future industries. Has there been any progress since the meeting between you know Prime Minister Lee Nak Yeon and uh, mm -hmm. Prime Minister Patel? Yeah, actually, since that uh, meeting. Uh, um, uh, I think it's very clear now uh, between our two governments that we should really continue working together and, uh, and I think that's maybe also a reason why uh, this week uh, during my visit here we had this startup event mm -hmm. uh, where 200, uh, nearly 200 uh, uh, startups from here participate in order to see how they can develop their activities also in, in Europe, in Luxembourg, and use Luxembourg in order to develop their activities in, in Europe. And, you know, being a startup, being a young company, you need some help if you want to go to a foreign market, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're coming from this region and you want to go to Europe. Many things are different. Certainly. Many things are different, and you have to cope with these sure. things. So it's much easier for these startups to do you know, to choose a country like Luxembourg, which is very small, very international, mm -hmm. uh, and which really, where the government really wants to help these companies to, to put their pass on the European market. So I think that, that's where the interest comes from. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm really happy about that development. Sure. I mean, since bringing up the event, I mean, you've got a special event coming up during your visit as well. Can you tell us a little bit more in detail uh, its purposes? Industry 4.0 is something really important to our country because we want to transform, for instance, our, our entire economy into a sustainable mm -hmm. economy based on communication and based on, uh, on the renewable energies. Mm -hmm. So, you know, all this brings a lot of important developments uh, in my country. And we need uh, your um, innovative new startups to help us building up this. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, and, and that's maybe one of, uh, one of the important reasons why we're always coming back to, to your country, is the fact that you have this uh, well-formed, uh, highly educated uh, young people over here which bright ideas, uh, with innovative ideas. And we want to use these ideas on the one side and help your young population, your businessmen and women to develop their business with their ideas in the European Union. So it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's complementary again uh, where, we, where we want to work together. Sure, a win-win situation. Win-win situation, absolutely. Absolutely, both nations can strive. Well, Luxembourg strives to attract Korean fintech and startup firms into the local market. 
Does that indicate that this country sees great potential in those Korean companies? Yeah. And if so, can you share with us the reasons? Absolutely. You know, as you might know, Luxembourg's financial center is uh, uh, one of the, the, the most important ones in, in, the, in, in the world. The, the fund industry, for instance, is the second biggest after New York uh, worldwide with 4.5 trillion euros under management in, in Luxembourg. But, you know, the um, financial sector in general, not only banking and funds, but also insurance companies, they are uh, developing their activities more and more into fintech activities. So mm -hmm. everything in all kind of economic sector is going to be digitalized. Artificial intelligence is uh, getting more and more important in the industrial business. Robotics is getting more and more important. And uh, you know, your companies, your startups, they are very active in developing new technologies, new techniques, how to do this. And, and that's why some of you already, or some Korean companies already settled down in Luxembourg, in the FinTech business, for instance, uh, in space business, in, in many others. And we want to, we want to um, attract even more of them in order to help us building up our new economic system and help them to develop their activities. Sure, to see potential in other countries is a way to step forward and looking at the bigger picture so you can succeed as well as a business-minded person. So while we're at it, let's take a glimpse of the event and learn a little bit more about Luxembourg's dynamic startup ecosystem. On July 17th, 2019, the second day of the economic mission to Korea, led by Deputy Prime Minister Etienne Schneider, there was an event in Seoul to promote Luxembourg's ecosystem for young, innovative companies. The event was organized by the Ministry of the Economy, Lux Innovation, and the Luxembourg Trade and Investment Office in Seoul, in collaboration with the Korean Institute for Startup and Entrepreneurial Development, also known as KISE. I want to uh, thank you for being present today at this uh, really important and uh, interesting event. Uh, as you might know, there are many ties between our two countries, between Luxembourg and Korea. I want you to see Luxembourg as your gateway to the European market. We will be there, my team will be there uh, in order to help you develop your activities, in order to help you uh, uh, granting your research and development activities uh, and all kind of problems you might have getting on a new market. At the event, a memorandum of understanding was signed between KISED and its Luxembourg counterpart, Lux Innovation, to support the development of the Korean and Luxembourg startup ecosystem and to support startups hoping to develop in either of the two countries. Also, there was a pitch session for eight Korean startups hoping to do business in Luxembourg to present their projects. Around uh, March, we got an invitation by the Luxembourg's Ministry of Economy to participate in their startup program in Luxembourg. So we participated in the ICT Spring uh, ICT conference in Luxembourg. So after that, we got an invitation to join this event as well, and we applied for the startup pitch session, and luckily we were invited to step onto the, the stage. The session lasted for about 50 minutes, and the participants' passion for their ideas was clear. Can you, can you give a, uh, a couple of examples of, uh, of specific use cases? And we have already built SQL gate, which is already being distributed and by, used by global, um, I mean, major. It was very fascinating to see that the judges were very, very motivated and interested in our um, business. So um, I think some of the questions that they asked was very sharp. And I think we want to go back and actually ponder upon um, these questions and build upon it later. Today's winner is Evospin. Congratulations. The winning company was given a chance to present during the pitching session at the next edition of the Arch Summit ICT Fair in Luxembourg. I cannot think of any other word than I am happy. <laughs> I'm just happy and I'm very grateful for having this opportunity to participate in this competition and compete with other uh, uh, 
leading startups in Korea. So the idea was really to connect uh, both ecosystems. We in Luxembourg have a well-developed ecosystem for startups and what we saw here today is that on the other side you're quite very well advanced also uh, when it comes to ecosystem for high technology companies. So in the future it will be interesting to collaborate together, to exchange on experiences and to also connect our companies together. Luxembourg aims to become what it calls a startup nation, which would boost its economy. There's no doubt that this event took it a step closer to its grand ambition and that it paved the way for Korean startups to solidify their global presence. Well, it looks like the event offers a real breakthrough, so to say, uh, for Korean startups looking to advance into the European nation, into their uh, market. Now, it's no exaggeration also to say that Luxembourg is a global hub, as you stated before. You know, we have read also about this new law that enables entrepreneurs to start a business with one euro in one day. Is this the 111 policy? Absolutely. You know, if, if, when we made the analysis about uh, what do young startups have as problems if they want to settle down, uh, you know, in many cases they don't really need huge capital to get mm -hmm. started. So they also most of the time don't have any capital, but they have ideas and they need their laptop, that's everything they need in order to develop their ideas, their services. But you know, the normal, in, in, in normal minimal amount of money you need in order to incorporate is like 12,500 euros in Luxembourg, which might not be seen as an important amount of money. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, you need to go to the notary public in order to, to incorporate your company. You need this capital, you need all the formalities, which are, you know, quite complex for a startup company who just have an idea mm -hmm. and they want to promote their idea and they want to do business with that idea. Mm -hmm. They don't want to cope with all this paperwork and... Uh, and Logistics. Uh, and it's a headache. Exactly. <laughs> That's a headache, exactly. So we decided this 111 policy, meaning that you will be able as a startup to uh, uh, settle down, to incorporate your company with one person alone is enough. Don't need a minimum of two. Uh, you can get all the formalities done in one day and you only need a capital of one euro. Mm -hmm. So, you know, since we put in place this uh, new legal framework, it allows so many new startups to pop up mm -hmm. and to develop their businesses. Maybe, you know, many of them will not succeed, but at least they got the, uh, the opportunity to try their ideas. Sure. And, and I can only, you know, hope that even those who don't succeed at the first time. Try, try they again. Try again and try again <laughs> and try again. As there's no capital invested, there's sure. no problem. As it takes you only one day in order to incorporate, there's no problem. So just, you know, try to figure out a new idea, try to, to launch uh, something new. And, and that's really a very successful policy. And I could only uh, encourage your government uh, to do the same. Sure. I mean, low risk means more opportunities. Absolutely. So and has it, do you think it has been quite successful? Oh yeah, already. We, we've mm -hmm. got, you know, if you just uh, look at the, at the number of, of, of companies which incorporated under this 111 mm -hmm. uh, policy, that's just amazing. Well, um, Luxembourg is also known for its business-friendly environment that multinationals uh, like you know, Apple, Amazon, Skype, you name it, and even Korea's uh, game company Nexon have their European headquarters in the nation. How has Luxembourg been able to draw so many world-leading uh, companies and capital into its land? Well, you know, the, the overall conditions uh, for investors in Luxembourg are just great. Uh, first of all, I would say, you know, most of the time people think about taxes. Mm -hmm. It's true that taxes are not very high in Luxembourg, but it's not the lowest as well, in, if, if you compare to the European Union. They are low, but they are not the lowest. So that is not the main argument. I think the main arguments are, is the fact that the country is a, an extremely open-minded country as I told you, is 48% of foreign people living in the country. Because we are open, and we're not only saying that we're open, we live uh, our, our openness. Then, of course, there are some uh, tax um, uh, advantages for foreigners coming to uh, uh, Luxembourg, so the, the so-called expats. And we 
you know, recently launched even a procedure, a working group on, uh, on talent attraction and retention. So how can we even improve this policy? How, what can we do to even improve the, uh, the fact to get these foreigners coming to Luxembourg, working here, bringing their families and, and, and living in, in Luxembourg? So we're working on this in, in, in a continuous way, you know, to always improve the situation. And that's, when I, that's what I'm uh, meaning when I'm talking about the infrastructure. We try to make everything or put everything in place so that expats, that foreigners who come to Luxembourg feel as if they were at home. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, reading up on Luxembourg, I did not know much. However, you know, learning about the um, openness they are to immigration, you know, a lot of the population is Portuguese and people from Belgium and France and Germany, not all neighboring countries come together and, you know, it is a, a mixture of so many different people coming mm -hmm. and creating so many types of businesses, which is another key to, you know, success is yeah. the different types of businesses that there are, then fair competition and mm -hmm. success is another story, but fair game, let's say. Well, startup ecosystem is growing in Luxembourg, and it's also the highest investment levels in startup per GDP in Europe. So that's quite interesting because I was curious about how Luxembourg has a high GDP per capita. US uh, in US dollars, 114,000 US dollars, the highest in the world with a population of only 600,000 people. And Luxembourg is also a global financial powerhouse. You know, you mentioned in one interview that space is a sector that has the economic potential to one day replace the importance of the financial sector in terms of its importance to the Luxembourg economy. Can you share with us that vision? Uh, since the uh, year 2016, I launched a new initiative called spaceresources.lu, mm -hmm. which is dedicated to all this kind, all these uh, new space companies. Because there are more and more private investors, mm -hmm. private startups, which want to use space as an economic hub, use resources from space. And that starts from, you know, Earth's observation activities in all kinds of domains mm -hmm. to uh, space mining, meaning that uh, in, uh, in some years from now you will go up into space, going on asteroids on the moon or other celestial bodies in order to, um, to get the minerals mm -hmm. uh, which are present on this, uh, on these celestial bodies and to commercialize them uh, doing space. So, you know, <clears throat> for us that's a really, we are at the very beginning of this new huge economy, but we are pretty sure that this will be developed and we want to be at the forefront of, uh, of this development. We are now the first country in the European Union to do so. We have huge success with the startup companies who, from all over the world coming to Luxembourg. I had discussions with the Korean startup uh, in that uh, business as well yesterday, which uh, is uh, on the way to incorporate in Luxembourg as well. So that's really moving forward. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, I can tell your excitement about this topic. You know, you know, the space industry is booming. And I was going to ask if there are any talks about partnering up with, you know, Korean Absolutely. companies. Absolutely. And uh, there's one already now incorporating in the incorporating process mm -hmm. in in Luxembourg, but we hope that with the event, uh, the startup event, uh, uh, with the 200 uh, South Korean startups, that we can uh, motivate some more to, to, sure. to come over uh, to Luxembourg and, and, and also use Luxembourg in order to be able to get into ESA programs. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the more, um, the more space companies we have in Luxembourg, the more we can participate in ESA programs and, and liberate uh, uh, public money to help these companies developing their activities. Sure, hopefully we can see some progress in that sure. area. Well, thank you very much for joining us and talking with us. Uh, final question before you leave, however. Uh, as Deputy Prime Minister, uh, Minister of Economy of Luxembourg, what do you think is the ideal direction for our economic cooperation in today's era of the Fourth Industrial Revolution? You know, the, um, everything will be technology-based. You know, high-tech, uh, digital economy, uh, uh, artificial intelligence and that's all issues where or all topics where Korea is uh, really very good in developing sure. and uh, and I see a huge potential between our two countries because we have our digital innovation strategy you have the know-how you have the um, you have the the brains 
in order to develop this. And, and that's why I hope that we could really uh, further collaborate, uh, bringing all these people together and, 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 and putting in place a digital uh, economy which, uh, which serves best to our, to our nations. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for joining us once thank again. You. Thank you so much. That's all the time we have for today. If you have any questions regarding Korea's economy and what goes on around the world, feel free to join us on social media where we'd love to answer your curiosities. We'll see you next week, same time, same place on The Chamber. Thank you once again. You're very busy. <laughs>